Recently, I made a small video talking about how I got into making my game on Godot. I'm going to call it Godot because Godot sounds stupid to me. With that said, everybody was so positive, now I just kind of want to share everything about this project with you all. The game I'm developing is called Slimes Can't Jump. This is the first game I've ever worked on. I've never used a programming language like this before. My background is limited to HTML and Bootstrapper in order to make websites, but typically I use the Adobe Suite to cheat those things out too. I'm not very good. The reason I tell you that is because if I can do this, then you certainly can do this too, and probably a lot better. If you're anything like me, then you've always wanted to make video games, but you thought the barrier to entry was too high, or that you weren't smart enough to make a fun video game that people would like. I can tell you that both of those things aren't true, because Godot is free, and you are smart enough. So back to Slimes Can't Jump, what exactly is it? Well, Slimes Can't Jump is my first little platformer game with disappearing platforms. The idea is, you have the inability to jump, but slimes can propel you up into the air, so collect the slimes to move through the course. Initially, I decided on this idea because it sounded as simple as possible. By removing the jump feature, there are only three options. You can move left, you can move right, or you can stop moving, and all three of those things are critical to the game. And you might be wondering, how is not moving an option? It's because if you're pressing one of the arrow keys while coming in contact with certain slimes, they will not perform the action you want them to. This entire decision came because I am not very good at coding and I did not know how to make player momentum not cancel out blob momentum, so I just said, no, it's not a bug, it's a feature. So after testing out the whole let go or else it don't do the right thing idea, I actually decided I very much liked it. Having to let go of the arrow keys while playing this game is very stressful and I feel like it adds an interesting mechanic. But like I said, I'm learning to code as I go along, so new mechanics will start to show up as you get further into the game as I'm learning to code them. A good example of this is the moving cube slimes, because obviously cubes are more structurally stable and they don't disappear when you jump on them. But they are partially alive and they don't really like being jumped on, so they do try to move away from you. And that's one of many things that I'm working on, like angry slimes that are going to approach you, and you may need to pull them into certain areas to get the jump you need to reach other slimes, because they are slimy slimes so you can still bounce off them. So that's about nine days of progress, and this is everything I've learned so far in action. The footage you're seeing is the latest build of the game. This game will be free when I'm done with it. It's really just a learning exercise. And I want more people to make games, because honestly, I've had more fun making this thing than ever playing a game recently. Games recently have just sucked for me, but making this thing? That, that is a puzzle I'm enjoying. Now, I would like to go into some detail about the things that I struggled with during my first nine days so far, trying to figure out and learn that weren't quite covered in the tutorials I saw, or perhaps they just weren't easy for me to digest in the way they were being explained to me. If you want to start developing your own game in Godot or Godot, I would highly recommend you check out Bracky's tutorial first, as it's where I learned all of the basics that I'm using for this video. With all of that said, I would like to start going into all of the issues I've had so far, and what I would recommend to avoid getting caught in the same things that I did. The first thing that I couldn't do that I needed to get better at is letting it go. As is about to be shown on the screen, this death animation is not perfect. It is not finished. It is not animating properly. I spent four days trying to fix this animation. I finally figured out exactly why it's not working properly, and I haven't thought of a workaround yet, but I lost four days for something that at the end of the day isn't the biggest deal and I can always fix later. So if you're where I was and you're trying to figure out how to trigger an animation or do a physics thing, walk away from it, work on something else in the meantime, because there are so many things to develop, you do not need that one aspect right now. Usually walking away and coming back is going to give you a new perspective. Most of the times when I figured out something that was a little harder for me to code, I wasn't coding at the time. I was doing something else entirely, like taking a shower or working on pixel art. So just walk away from it for a little bit. The answer may just come to you in the back of your mind. I'm not sure why it works that way, it just does. But sometimes you're trying to do something that's just a bit too advanced for you. So the second thing I had to learn was to scale it back. Initially, one of the core mechanics that I wanted in this game was to have raining slimes that happen in different patterns and you had to wait for the correct one in order to properly progress through the area. And that shit was so far above my understanding when I first started to try to code this, but luckily I was trying to explain the problem to my wife and she kind of told me that I was being an idiot and trying to do something that was a little bit above me as my first project. Which kind of goes back to my first point, because now that I've stopped focusing on how to make that mechanic work and I've worked on making the base mechanics for my game, I figured out how to do the slime rain. Yippee for me. I'm probably going to add that to the game. <laughs> now diving into the more Godot specific things, something that tripped me up, but not for very long admittedly, is how the equal to greater 
greater than or less than works inside of Godot. A single equal sign means that you are telling the system that this equals that. This can be used in commands in order to set momentum like I use for my slime blobs. If there are two, that means that you are asking, does this equal that? Which can be used to activate an if statement if the value does in fact equal what you're specifying. If there's an exclamation point in an equal sign, it says, does this not equal that? I could have definitely worded that better, but this is one of the most helpful things in the entirety of Godot. You can use the greater and the less than signs in front of an equal sign to ask if it is greater or less than that. But with those two, you'll probably have a good grasp if you've done the Brachys tutorial, as that's the system used to delineate between the animations that he has you do. And the biggest thing I can say if you're coding in Godot is that you can preload scenes in order to use them in other scenes. For example, I use the particle scene here so I can trigger it every time one of my blobs is touched. When I finished Brachys tutorial, there was a few things that I didn't quite understand, and that was one of them. He continued to reference nodes that were inside of the player scene, and I didn't know what any of that was, so when I tried to recreate that in other nodes, it would always tell me that it wasn't linked. I did not realize that you have to preload other scenes in order to get that effect. If you are having this problem, I can't find other tutorials that word it simply enough for someone as simple-minded as myself. Maybe it's there and I just couldn't understand it, but I found out you can use an onReady variable to reference other scenes inside of your current scene, so then you can then use functions in order to access it. For example, I use a particle scene every time one of my blobs is destroyed or jumped on. Maybe better ways to do this, and every Godot veteran just like facepalmed super hard right there because they're like, wow, that's the most basic jazz, but hey, I got stuck on it, so somebody else might have too. I did have one other issue when I was going through the tutorial, which is that I really struggle to use other people's content for just about anything. It makes me feel very guilty and dirty. So I was making my own variations of the bricks that were available in Bracky's tutorial, as well as making my own unique sprite. Um, you don't need to do that. You need to avoid doing that. Learn with other people's stuff for as long as you can, and then make your own stuff when time comes, if you want to. There's free assets everywhere. I'm not sure why I'm like this, maybe because fair use has been such a talking point in the industry that I've been working in my entire life, so I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But if you've watched this far, now I can give you the ultimate cheat tool to make your games better and your code more solid in a matter of seconds, to increase your understanding by a magnitude of no less than 13. And that's use chat GPT to ask for an example. I know artificial intelligence is a hot button topic and I'm not saying have chat GPT code everything for you, but if you really can't find a way to make a certain type of code work and you ask chat GPT to do so for you, nine times out of 10, it will. That example, you can then re-articulate into your own code, your own style and have it work. I have struggled with one thing in particular for a long time. I asked ChatGPT for an example of how to do it and it explained it effortlessly. There was an issue that you need to be aware of and that's that ChatGPT doesn't know anything about the newest version of Godot as it's after 2022, but you can still use the framework to figure it out in modern terms. And that's just about all the lessons I've learned so far, but there are a few people out there who want to know exactly how the game development is going for someone as newbie as me, so I'll tell you real quick. On day one, I built a little sprite for Jalorp, our main character director of Slimes Can't Jump, using the Pixelrama tool which is available online and was the one recommended on the Godot website. From there I worked on getting Chalorp into the game and started following Bracky's tutorial. I'm not going to lie, I was ridiculously excited when I got to this point where I could have Chalorp walk across the screen. I then decided I needed more animations for him so I made this one where he's getting damaged, no it was not complete because I scrapped the idea of damage from the game. I then decided I was going to modify the Bracky's tutorial bricks to be a little bit more my own so I didn't feel like I was stealing. I know they are public use, I just felt really Really bad about it because that's one of my quirks. After making a whole bunch of cartoonishly candy looking chunks to walk on, I decided I was ready to actually start putting the game world together. Initially that was not going so well. I decided to make my own collectible instead of a coin, I did slime blobs. And this was the first of two times I got discouraged because this is something that should have been fairly easy. I had a tutorial right there and I still somehow managed to mess it up. So I got a little sad here, took a little bit of a break until the next day. I fixed the movement so now he has a bit of a running animation and made a Halloween-y background before revisiting the collectible item, which I figured out as well and I felt a lot better about myself, so I started to think that I really had a handle on this. With that momentum, I made a falling animation and a slime that when you collected it, breaks the game. This is the first time I've ever crashed while debugging something, so I was really discouraged. Luckily, I found this awesome tutorial. How to make a satisfying 2D jump pad in Godot 4. Let's just take a second, because this guy helped me out so much. He's only got two videos on his channel. He hasn't been active in about two years. If you're not going to subscribe to me, at least subscribe to Unsubscribe.
Austin Peak. His tutorial is awesome and I love his devlog, please. With that said, I was able to get my slimes to make me go into the air and not crash the game. I also found out I had an issue with some invisible walls. Chaos began to ensue as I decided to make new animations and didn't implement them properly while defining the idea for the game. I had to remake the slimes because I wanted them to be floating so they needed to be more spherical and then I moved on and began level development. On the end of day one, my wife, I mean my amazing alpha testers, found out that I built my model wrong and I'd have to redo the entire player sprite because it didn't quite line up with the boxes that I It's It was stupid. It, it didn't make it the right size. It had issues. On day two, I fixed the model and also tried implementing a checkpoint system with these little mushroom minions. Wasn't done until like day four and a half. And on screen is where I nearly quit because I was putting so much work into all of these new blobs and these animations and I just could not get a death animation to trigger. After trying dozens of variations in the code, I realized what I was doing was stupid and I figured out I wasn't putting things in the right place and I finally got a single frame from the death animation to trigger. I know why it's not the full animation and I'm working on a fix now. I then came up with the idea for Slime Cube to help me make more complex puzzles and I was super stoked about that so here they are. Once I was satisfied with all the base mechanics of my game as well as the idea itself I decided I needed my own world and I wanted it to be a lot more dark and mycelium inspired so I decided to start getting rid of all of the Brachys bricks that I was using previously and even the you know the inspired versions and make my own and I think they came out really nice. And the last two things I've done occurred both yesterday and today where I added particle effects to all of the slimes when they had contact as well as replacing the game world with my new one that's all mine. This is pretty much where the game is going to be for now, on screen is what the current version looks like, and I am super proud of how far it's come along since day one, it's only been about 10 days, and I've adored every single part of this except for the four and a half days that I hated it. The next total week of development is probably just going to be extending the universe, because right now, if you're quite quick, you can beat the entire game in about two and a half minutes, and I want it to be at least a 10 to 12 minute experience. Subscribe right now, because please, and also I would love to hear about what you have to say about what I've done so far, what you think about Godot, Godot, or any suggestions you might have for me. If any of my tips helped you at all and you are also just starting Godot, that is super duper cool, and thank you for watching. As always, this has been San for Days. I'm Course, and I get everywhere.